Hello, everyone, and welcome to Software Architecture Monday. Uh, my name is Mark Richards, and in this lesson, number 153, uh, we'll take a look at the differences between service-based architecture and service-oriented architecture, which is otherwise known as SOA. Uh, you can get a listing of all of the lessons I do for Software Architecture Monday on my website at developertoarchitect.com slash lessons. A lot of lessons do come from these two books I recently wrote with my friend Neil Ford, and as a matter of fact, uh, most of the material uh, from this lesson is contained within the Fundamentals of Software Architecture book, where you actually can get a lot more detailed information about both service-based architecture and service-oriented architecture. Uh, but what I wanted to do in this video was just kind of spend a quick 10 minutes to really outline those differences. This is a question that I get very frequently. And so this gives me the opportunity to answer it kind of globally. <laughs> but I want to show you and illustrate service-based architecture and then SOA, what's known as service-oriented architecture. Uh, let's actually start with service-based architecture. Uh, this architecture style is really a hybrid of microservices. Uh, the shape of this are well-defined domains, portions of the application deployed as separate units of software. So it is still a distributed architecture. Now, one of the main differences that we see between service-based architecture and SOA is that service-based architecture really represents just a single application scope, uh, a collection of functionality that, well, in the old days used to be, or sometimes currently, uh, in one single monolithic application. Whereas SOA really is more of an enterprise scope, uh, integrating other systems together. Now, service-based architecture does have services, uh, but these differentiate from others because they are very coarse-grained services. Uh, the functionality in each of these services really represents all the functionality for that particular domain, uh, that large thing the application does. And because of this, Really, we have anywhere between three and 12 services within service-based architecture. But one of the unique things is because of the small number of services, we can actually have and share a single monolithic database. But we don't have to. Uh, one of the cool things about service-based architecture is its varying topologies. It's very flexible. We can start to break up the user interface, aligning it with particular domains. Uh, we can even break up the user interface further within those domains. As a matter of fact, although it allows for a monolithic database, it doesn't say it has to have one. In other words, we can start breaking apart the database, aligning it with domain, these very coarse-grained domain services. And that is service-based architecture. Now, <clears throat> from its uh, superpowers, what is it good at doing? Uh, these are the star ratings that Neil and I had put together uh, in our book, The Fundamentals of Software Architecture for Service-Based Architecture. Uh, notice uh, these aren't five stars. Five stars is the, 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 the best. <laughs> one star is the worst. Um, in other words, not fully supported would be one star or not really well represented. Five stars means this is a great architecture to do these things in. Four is still pretty good. And we see agility, that ability to respond quickly to change, combined with great deployability, flexibility, that fault tolerance, and testability. But notice cost is also four stars, meaning it's good. This is not an expensive architecture style. But we always must combine the good with the bad in terms of trade-offs. For all these good things, service-based architecture is not great for areas of elasticity, systems integration, managing complex workflows. Uh, certainly you can. It's just that service-based architecture doesn't lend itself towards these kind of characteristics. Okay, that was our nickel tour of service-based. Uh, let's take our nickel tour now of service-oriented architecture. Uh, this is a fairly old architecture style. It came around around 2001, uh, 2002. Uh, became very popular, as much of a hype, as a matter of fact, as microservices. 
Now, the shape of this architecture style, service-oriented, is really that core functionality is shared across multiple heterogeneous systems. Uh, service-oriented architecture, or what I'll now call SOA, just to shorten it, was really all about reuse of major enterprise services across the organization. And that was what its superpower was. So we noticed the first difference between service-oriented and service-based. With service-oriented, this has an enterprise-wide context. We create services that different areas, domains, divisions, uh, departments will also then leverage. A good example is the enterprise service customer in a large insurance company may be leveraged by all the different divisions and departments such as personal insurance, uh, home insurance, things like um, uh, travel insurance, business insurance, uh, all of these kind of different insurances you can have, which are all different departments. But one of the things about SOA is that it does contain a fairly strict service taxonomy where we define business services, enterprise services, application services, infrastructure. Uh, these are the four main services, but you can have, well, as many services as you want to define. Now, there have been a lot of engagements in SOA where that taxonomy has stretched to 10 different kinds of services. One of the unique things about SOA, though, is this use of a central ESB, Enterprise Service Bus, and that manages all of the choreography and orchestration, um, all of the contract decoupling, um, the glue that basically holds all these services together. Now, if we take a look at the superpowers of SOA, it's real sweet spot. And notice the five stars on this, everybody, of the level of abstraction I can make a RESTful call using JSON and invoke some sort of COBOL program uh, using a DB2 store procedure. Uh, I, it separates not only the contract decoupling, but also the protocol coupling. It has the highest level of abstraction due to that enterprise message bus. Uh, the integration aspects of SOA are oh, probably better than any other architecture style. It's what it's really meant for, interoperability, and also managing really complex workflows through that message bus. However, with all that good, comes a lot of bad. As a matter of fact, uh, it's hard to change things, and this is one of the demise of SOA. Uh, it's very, very expensive. Notice cost is only one star. <laughs> but Deployability, evolvability, performance, simplicity, testability, these are all things that really plagued SOA and let it down that hype curve that it so much enjoyed. Now, one of the last guidelines I'll show you as a difference is kind of when to use each of these. Uh, because service-based architecture is really great if you have um, high levels of agility, in other words, that fast time to market need, um, it separates out functionality by domain. So I can quickly find where the change is needed, test only that service and deploy only that service. Also, if you do have fairly well-defined domains within your application, uh, this is its sweet spot to use it. Uh, great for fault tolerance because if we lose one service, other functionality in other domains is still fully operational. And of course, the discussion about data. If we're stuck with monolithic data and it's difficult to break it apart, that's the sweet spot for service-based architecture. However, SOA does have one good use still, and that is system-wide integration. Reuse of core services across the division. Um, we've noticed some lessons learned about that because of what's called a context. It's very difficult to create one service that satisfies all departments and divisions within our company. And that was one of the lessons learned about SOA. But its sweet spot is still in systems integration. So as you can see through this quick 10 minute journey, comparing service-based with SOA really is comparing apples to oranges. These are two entirely different architecture styles. 
So this has been Lesson 153, a comparison and contrast of service-based architecture versus service-oriented architecture, SOA. So I hope you enjoyed that comparison. Stay tuned and two more Mondays for the next lesson in Software Architecture Monday.